My clinical experience is that the relation between size of surgery and pain is poor. And I often treat patients who report severe pain even after relatively small surgeries, specifically if there is a tissue inflammation, which is often the case in dentistry. Pain is a subjective, individual experience, and it cannot be predicted by size of surgery. And therefore, it's so important that we trust patients when they say, I'm in pain, and not argue, that's not possible, this surgery should not be painful. Pain triggers the perioperative stress reaction and may compromise uh, the immune system. Recent research indicates that pain, acute pain after surgery is one of the most important risk factors for the development of chronic post-surgical pain. We screened 1,500 patients after surgery and 10% of them reported persisting pain in the area of surgery. And there is increasing evidence that this might happen also in dentistry. But even in the absence of such negative outcomes, I'm convinced that it is ethical obligation to reduce and to prevent unnecessary suffering. The aim of pain management is not always to reduce pain to zero, but to a degree that the patient feels comfortable. The patient needs to feel that the professional is doing his best to take care of the whole patient and to take him or her seriously. In general, several modalities of pain management should be combined, for example, local anesthetics, enzymes, cooling. This is what we call multimodal analgesia. The infiltration of the area of surgery with local anesthetics is one of the basic elements of successful pain management after almost all types of surgeries, even after large surgeries. And what the nurses in the recovery room report again and again is that in patients without wound infiltration, it's much more difficult to titrate pain down to an acceptable level. For wound infiltration in the medical field, we use lidocaine or ropivacaine, which lasts a little bit longer than lidocaine. Paracetamol and NSAIDs are the most frequently used pain drugs. Paracetamol is a weak analgesic, it has few side effects, but be careful not to overdose the drug because this may result in severe liver failure. NSAIDs may cause side effects like gastrointestinal, renal or cardiovascular complications. The risk depends on the pre-existing condition of the patient, on the duration and dosage of treatment with NSAIDs. The combination of paracetamol and NSAIDs may lower required doses and risks. In cases of severe pain, not adequately reduced by non-opioid analgesics, we use short-acting opioids like tramadol for a short period of time. If patients report symptoms of neuropathic pain, like numbness or burning pain or tingling or pain after touching, then non-opioid analgesics often are not very effective. And we use drugs like gabapentin or pregabalin for a few days. In our hospital, we also have made very good experiences with non-medical interventions like acupuncture or TENS for pain management. TENS means transcutaneous electric nerve stimulation. It uses a low electric current and is produced by a small device. What patients specifically like on TENS is that they can control the treatment on their own. Communication, authenticity and empathy of the caregiver is of extreme importance. How often did I hear patients saying they just gave me a painkiller, they didn't talk to me, they left me alone. Follow-up of patients after surgery is important not only to assess 
the results of surgery or wound healing, but also to get a feedback on their pain experience and sometimes to identify patients in risk to develop chronic post-surgical pain. We run a pain registry where patients answer a short questionnaire some months after surgery by email or smartphone and we learned really a lot from this feedback. However, it's not yet implemented in hospitals everywhere. <music>